Hello, everybody. First of all, uh, my apologies for getting this report on late. Um, I had every attention on bringing you this report late Saturday night after OU's uh, convincing win over Louisiana Monroe, but I was not feeling my best. As a matter of fact, you can tell my voice is still um, not at ultimate strength, but but doable for this report as I bring it to you late Sunday, um, you know, almost 24 hours after the Sooners beat Louisiana Monroe 59-17. It was expected to be a blowout, and the game was decided pretty damn early. Um, I will talk more about the game in a second, although there's really not a whole lot to say about um, a game in which one team was expected to beat the other one uh, by about 45, 46 points, and it almost ended up being that. And we'll talk a little bit about um, Ohio State. Of course, I'll have a big report on Oklahoma, Ohio State, in the middle of the week. But naturally, um, before we talk about the, uh, what happened between the Sooners and the Warhawks, the atmosphere was something else on Saturday night. Of course, the first game for the Sooners at home since the renovation, uh, the big time renovation on the south side. And you could tell if you saw the game on TV or if you were there in Norman um, what a difference it makes. I guess you really had to be there uh, because of the noise factor. Obviously, now it's going to be an even louder stadium because the southwest and southeast corners are now closed and it's a bowl shape all around the stadium, not just most of the stadium, but completely around the stadium. And with the renovations of having those corners filled with more seating and, of course, the fan zones and that bowl-shaped atmosphere, the noise now doesn't leave the corners of that end zone. They stay inside the confines and make it an even louder environment. And hopefully that will play into the Sooners' advantage for future home games, especially the one coming up in just a few days on the 17th against Ohio State. But uh, before I talk briefly about the Sooners and Buckeyes, uh, just to talk about the Sooners and Louisiana Monroe. Again, this was one of those games where you knew the Sooners were going to win. They were going to win big. It's just a superiority advantage as far as speed, as far as especially size, um, strength, and depth, okay, and coaching for that matter either. Um, it was just a ball game where you knew that the Sooners would win big, but the big thing you wanted to see was, number one, balance, and that's what you got. Um, you know, at, by halftime, the Sooners had over 200 yards rushing and over 200 yards passing. Baker Mayfield was absolutely sensational. But then again, the offensive line was sensational. And this was also a game, too, where you can afford, if you're Lincoln Riley on offense or if you're Mike Stoops on defense, to dabble with the lineup, even at the beginning of the game. For example, Drew Samaya, you know, we know he is the right tackle for the team, but he was actually right guard for, for most of the game in, in the first half. Um, he played right guard, and then they moved um, Bobby Evans to the uh, tackle position where he got his first start. Okay, he got his first start, and he's just a redshirt freshman, so some valuable playing time. I thought the offensive line was terrific, opening holes for Mixon and for Pirine. Uh, Mixon, uh, one heck of a game, over 100 yards rushing. And great thing about a game like this is that, you know, the second half, you, know, you didn't have to play. Some of your starters and Baker Mayfield, I mean, he was wearing the visor. Uh, for a good part of the uh, second half from the sideline. And uh, I'll talk here in a second about Austin Kendall and the game he had. Uh, but offensively, solid, you know, receivers got involved. Um, again, you know, Mark Andrews, you know, he doesn't catch very many passes, but when he does catch one, it's going to be a touchdown. If it's not a touchdown, it's going to be one for plenty of yardage, and he certainly delivered. In fact, the Sooners were up 21 nothing before the first quarter ended. It was 42 nothing at halftime. Um, offense, uh, the first teamers uh, played a near perfect uh, first half, but then again, you're playing against a team in Louisiana Monroe that was just simply outmatched. Um, looking at the defense, uh, I thought the defensive line was uh, pretty good. As a matter of fact, if you, if you look at the defense, they had some uh, some new starters in the game as well. We saw Capri Doucet start at linebacker. We saw DJ Ward, you know, who's, who's, you know, he's seen action for the series, but he was a starter at defensive end. Uh, there was no Will Johnson, though. Will Johnson did not uh, did not play. And I don't know if it was an injury or discipline issues. I never found out. I don't think anybody from the media, at least not uh, not after the game on Saturday, knew why he didn't play. Um, of course, you got to have him against uh, the Buckeyes coming up on the 17th, but uh, he didn't play. Um, but there were some good performances. I, I thought, you know, Jordan Evans was everywhere. I, I thought Jordan Zem Evans played a hell of a game. Uh, Charles Walker, you know, in the first half did some good things, although uh, they did have to tend uh, to an area behind his knee. They put ice on it. And anytime ice goes on in any part of your body, that could be an indication that uh, you may not be coming back in the game. And of course, you got the game in hand anyway against the Warhawks. 
So you know, Walker, um, his night was pretty much uh, pr pretty much done um, after the ice was applied. But still, remember early on when the Sooners led seven nothing, um, you know, and the Warhawks, you know, were uh, getting some. Uh, decent plays as far as the passing game going against the center secondary that's still having some issues. But on a third and short, you know, Walker blew up a play and uh, made it fourth down. Of course, the center defense took care of the rest with Evans with, on a breakup. So uh, first half for the defense, you know, there were uh, some things that they've got to work on. Again, the, the corner situation, I'm still not very comfortable with. Matter of fact, um, Dakota Austin, we know that uh, he was the projected starter this year, started last week against Houston, had a bad game, and the Stoops brothers were not kidding, especially Mike when they said that that position is wide open. So first half, uh, not only does Dakota Austin not start, he doesn't play at all in the first half, and Parrish Cobb does play. I thought that he had an average game. At times looked good, but at times um, he got beaten, of course, in the third quarter. There was a communication mix-up in which led to Louisiana Monroe's first touchdown in which nobody was near the wide receiver. And again, that was just a that was just a coverage mix-up right there. Um, we saw Wolf um, Sutherland get some action in at safety. Also, too, Makaya Quick at the corner position. A bit of a struggle for him um, on Saturday night. Um, and we also saw uh, Parnell Motley play at the corner position. So this is a game where you can not only, you know, get a rotation in uh, as far as whatever area you want, but uh, you can make those guys play um, – Get, get valuable playing time as well, you know, early on. I mean, it wasn't one of those games where you just play the first teamers the whole way and in the second half you sit them all out and you play the second teamers the second half. The second teamers were getting action in this game early, and I thought that was pretty important and uh, getting them a little bit of experience. So you're, you're looking also at um, a, a defense that um, I thought was, was pretty physical up front. I thought the defensive line played really, really good. I, I thought they really came ready to play. And we saw Caleb Kelly, the freshman at linebacker, you know, getting in on some action. And also at the uh, defensive end spot, um, Amani Bletso, the freshman out of uh, Lawrence, Kansas. So this was a game that, you know, it did feature the veterans doing what, they, what we thought they would do. Mayfield was terrific. Of course, P. Ryan and uh, Mixon likewise, but also to some of the newer guys as well. And how about, you know, Nick Basquin, the walk-on, you know, from Norman North, you know, getting that long touchdown um, in the second quarter. Good for him. So this is a game where you, what you're trying to do, because you know you're going to win big, you want to improve on the areas from last week that were giving you struggles. Third downs, obviously, were a pain in the ass last week for the center defense. Of course, you're not playing against Houston again last night in Louisiana Monroe, but that area improved as far as uh, third downs. And, and that's an area that I think the Sooners can feel a little bit better about. But now you put the game behind you, okay? And and by the way, one more thing, too. wanted to highlight Austin Kendall really quick. Had an up-and-down third quarter, and the fourth quarter um, played terrific. Had a couple of touchdowns that he was involved in. And you know, remember, he led the Sooners on three scoring drives in the second half. So some, some playing time for the uh, true freshman, Austin Kendall, from the East Coast. And hopefully this year, the only time we'll ever see him is when the Sooners are blowing out their opponent. Otherwise, if you're seeing him, obviously that means something's happened to Baker. Well, Baker and the boys, now we'll get ready for these guys right here. Yeah, I could already envision the traffic nightmares that will be at its ultimate highest in Norman, Oklahoma on Saturday. And in case you didn't know it, Donald Trump is also going to be in Norman uh, somewhere for a fundraising event, I believe, that very same Saturday. So you think Saturday, September 17th, won't be a busy day. And of course, with the construction nightmares, I'm sure you've heard about it if you don't live in the uh, Norman area. If you do live in Norman, you witness them nearly every day you commute. Yeah, Saturday, give yourself a lot of time, okay? Give yourself a lot of time to travel uh, because it's going to be uh, chaotic. And I'm sure the Buckeye fans will be traveling in entourages. They'll probably send 9, 10, maybe even as many as 11,000 of their faithful from Columbus and surrounding areas to make that trip to the heartland of uh, central Oklahoma I'll tell you what about Ohio State. You know, their, their game against Tulsa, you know, it, it was a struggle for their offense for about a half. But when you have a defense that can come up with big plays and turn those Oskies into touchdowns, 
uh, you can get some separation and you can get the momentum. And in the second half, their uh, offense against the Golden Hurricane, Grant Tulsa's a mediocre team, but still, uh, second half, their offensive line, the Buckeyes, were opening holes and making life easier for you know JT Barrett and the gang. And you know, Ohio State ended up, I think, winning 48 to three, and you know they had to endure a weather delay for I think an, an hour or an hour and a half. Uh, it's like Columbus got some pretty good storms uh, during the game. But they were able to um, weather Tulsa and pull away and, and late in the first half and leave no doubt in that game. But guys have played two games just like Oklahoma. Ohio State's 2-0, and ranked in the top five. And, you know, this is a team that, again, is contending for the national title. And they've never lost a true road game in the four years that Urban Meyer has been there as coach, okay? Um you know, two losses at home, one loss in the Orange Bowl to Clemson, and another loss in the Big Ten title game to Michigan State not too long ago. They've never lost a true road game under Urban Meyer. That's something. And the Sooners will have to contend with the team that, even though they lost a dozen players to last year's NFL draft, is still very talented, well coached. They work their tails off, very physical type team, and an offense that's not too dissimilar from Houston's. So I remember Tom Herman, the current Houston coach, was the offensive coordinator on that national championship team for the Buckeyes two years ago during the first year of the college football playoff. Ohio State's going to come ready to play. Hopefully the Sooners with that home field advantage and the lessons learned against Houston from, you know, from week number one can be geared to get the job done. I don't know who will be favored in the game. I mean, I know at the beginning of the year um, it was the Sooners, but of course things have changed with the loss of the Cougars and, you know, you know Ohio State's 2-0 and and will come in uh, – Either maybe a one-point favorite, one-point underdog, or a pick em, but the line's going to be very close and what could very well be a game that comes down the wire. But Sooners, hopefully we'll take advantage of that crowd noise. It will be the largest crowd ever to watch a game. Um, it will break the record that was set Saturday uh, for Oklahoma and Louisiana Monroe, which just barely toppled 87,000. Um, you'll know there'll be even... Um, more at this particular game. Ticket prices, if you go through those independent websites, um, I think we'll probably go two, three hundred dollars to start, and they could easily go into the four digits. That's insane, huh? Uh, JT Barrett's one heck of a quarterback, and he played at Wichita Falls, not far from Norman, so I'm sure he'll have family and friends that will be making the trip, you know, about the three hour journey from Wichita Falls, Texas, to, uh, to Norman. Sooners have the work cut out for them. It's going to be a pretty physical game. We'll talk more about the game on my weekly matchup show sometime during the middle of the week. And don't forget to join me for my brand new show, Let's Talk College Football. We'll go over my five picks. Uh, I've had better picks than the ones I had this past week. Won some, but but uh, lost some too. And I'll have my uh, good, bad, and the ugly nationwide as far as teams this past week. And my thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs off for Big 12 teams as well. Sooners win impressively over Louisiana Monroe, but then again, we thought that was going to happen, and we'll see uh, what will happen um, entering this game as far as the injury situation with uh, DJ Ward in the shoulder and Charles Walker and the uh, the knee. Hopefully, they're ready to go. Hopefully, Will Johnson um, will be ready to go too. Again, still wondering what happened to him and why he didn't play on Saturday. Sooners 59, Louisiana Monroe 17 for OU's first win, but wiped the slate clean as far as as what the Sooners have done, and get ready for what hopefully will be a Sooner win on Saturday. But um, Ohio State might have something to say about that. Weekly matchup show coming up later on. Thanks, everybody.